There have been some really cool developments in AI recently, especially with opening up ChatGPT to the public. This made me think, how could we use ChatGPT when we we're stuck writing an Excel formula? Let me show you some really cool examples. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take some of the questions you've asked me and see if ChatGPT can give you the correct answer. In case you're not familiar with what ChatGPT is, it's basically an AI chatbot. You can ask it questions and it answers. It's currently free. All you need to do is go to openai.com. You can scroll down here, go to ChatGPT, and then try ChatGPT, or just go to this URL directly. Now, as you can see, there's currently high demand for this because it's such an impressive tool and it's super easy to use. All you need to do is type in your question here and it's going to answer it for you. Let's take a look at our first question. Here's a comment from Steel Graves underneath this video. And he asked, I have a question and hoping you have a way to do this easily. Is there a formula for calculating the number of words in an Excel sheet? I see VBA, but looking for something simpler, hoping for your whiz brain. Well, it's not going to be my brain. It's going to be ChatGPT's. So let's see what ChatGPT has to say to this. I'm just going to copy this part of the question, control C. Let's go to ChatGPT and see what it has to say. Okay, I'm just going to paste it in and see what we get. Okay, it says there is no built-in formula in Excel that you can use to calculate the number of words in a sheet. However, you can use the len function to calculate the number of characters in a cell and then divide the number by an average number per word to estimate the number of words. That's not really what I want to do. Now it gets interesting. You can also use substitute to replace spaces with nothing, then use the len function to count the number of letters and then add one to get the number of words. Okay, so assuming that you want to check the number of words in cell A1. Okay, so now I went back to a single cell. I don't want just a single cell. Okay, so alternatively, you can use VBA or macros to do the same. Now you also have to keep in mind that every time you ask it a question, it can be the exact same question. It can give you different answers. Look, it's going ahead and writing a VBA code, even though we actually said we didn't want that. We just wanted something simpler. You have defined the function. You can call it by entering the formula. Oh, it's written a function in VBA. That's also great. But yeah, I didn't want the VBA version. I want the formula version. So let's see if I can tell it exactly what I want. I'd like to go with the formula version, update it to apply to range A1 to C100 and exclude blank cells. Those ones shouldn't be counted. Okay, you can use the following formula to estimate the number of words in a range of cells while excluding blank cells. Okay, this formula uses the sum product function, Excel, and divide by five to estimate the number of words. We don't want any estimation. We actually want to get the number of words. This formula uses the same idea of replacing spaces with nothing and counting the number of letters and adding one to get the number of words. But this time, it also makes sure that only non-black cells are counted by using this. Okay, this seems good. Let's just test it out. I'm going to copy it. Let's go to Excel. I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so A1 to C100. Right now I get zero. There's nothing in there. So let's, that's five words. That looks great. That seems to work. And this formula is valid for older Excel versions as well. And you can update it as you need to, depending on your range. Now I tried to get ChatGPT to rewrite this using the new Office 365 function, like the text split function. And it tried. We had a few back and forth, so it even recognizes that text split is a newer function that was introduced in Excel 365. So if you're using an earlier version, it's not going to work. But the problem was that this function wasn't working. So we had a bunch of back and forths and none of them worked. You just have to keep in mind, though, that ChatGPT doesn't have access to the Internet and it only has limited information after 2021. But if it knows the text split function, it must know the text join function because that got introduced before, but it wasn't able, at least in this iteration that we were going through, to combine these functions to give me the result that I wanted. So I ended up writing my own version. In case you're interested, it's this one here. And we can test it out. If I just add other text to this, both versions give us the same results. It's just much easier and simpler to write the second version, of course, only if you have Office 365 or Excel 2021. 
But the great thing is that the first version it gave me did work. Now let's take a look at another question. This comment is from Carrie and she asks, I've been trying to use data validation on cells that have formulas in them, but it seems like it doesn't work even in the latest Excel versions. For example, cell A2 contains formula B2 plus C2. If I set the validation on cell A2 saying that the sum shouldn't be greater than 10, any number could still be put into cells B2 and C2 and A2's error message won't be triggered even if their sum is greater than 10. And yes, that's true. Data validation doesn't work on cells that are driven by formulas. It works on input cells. Now let's see what ChatGPT has to say about this. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in the comment and I'm going to remove this part. Just wondering if you already have a video for this. And let's see what ChatGPT has to say. Excel's data validation feature is intended to validate the data that a user enters into a cell rather than the results of a formula. It's smart, it knows that. Because the result of a formula depends on the values in other cells, the data validation rule is applied to the formula's input cells. Okay, to validate the results of a formula, you can use a conditional formatting rule that checks the result of the formula and highlights the cell if it does not meet the criteria. For example, you could create conditional formatting that checks if the value in cell A2 is greater than 10 and applies a red fill color to the cell it has. This way, when the values in cells B2 and C2 cause the sum to exceed 10, the cell will be highlighted in red, indicating an error. Okay, that's great. It says you can also use custom VBA script for this. Alternatively, if you have advanced formulas and complexity, you might consider using Excel add-ons. Okay, so we have different suggestions. Well, one suggestion would also be to add an if statement, right? To check if A2 is greater than 10, then it should return error, otherwise valid. Now, let's say we are interested in the conditional formatting method, but we don't know how to go about this. So let's see if ChatGPT can tell us. Okay, to set up conditional formatting for a range of cells in Excel, use the new rule option. Here's an example after it has to set up a rule that applies a red fill color if the cell value is greater than 10. Okay, so first we need to select it, go to conditional formatting, select new rule, use the formula and use this function and then format it to have a red fill. Press OK to close. You can also apply a more complex formula. For example, you can compare the value in cell A2 with the sum of values in cells B2 and C2 or use and or operators for multiple conditions. Okay, we're just going to go with the simple one. We're going to go with this one and see if we can get it to work. So let's go to Excel here. Then we're going to highlight these cells. It said go to home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. And we're going to paste this in and format the cell to have a red fill. Click on OK and OK. Now let's check this out. We're going to go above 10 here. Looks great. Let's copy these down. And I'm just going to add some random numbers to these. That's amazing. That works. Next question is about nested if functions that we all struggle with. So this comment is from FreePilot, which was under the if formula video. And they asked, we have far if ceiling is greater than 3000. I think these should be zeros and visibility less than five miles, but MVFR if ceiling is between this and or visibility is this, but this. So just reading this can make us a bit dizzy. Now to be able to solve this, we will have to break it down into simple steps. Let's see if ChatGBT is able to break it down faster than we can to be able to generate the nested if function. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's bring up the browser and paste this in ChatGPT and see what we get. Okay, so it looks like you're trying to build a system for classifying weather conditions based on the ceiling cloud cover and visibility. Okay, I had no idea that's what it was about. And now it's generating us the code in Python. Yeah, we never told it which language or which application we need the code for. So let's see if we can specify that and let's see if it can turn this into Excel. Just going to put in, make this into an Excel formula. Here is how you could create an Excel formula to classify weather conditions based on cloud cover and visibility. Okay, so it's going on and giving us quite a detailed explanation of what it's doing there. 
But for now, I'm just going to ignore that. I just want to copy this formula and see if it works. Okay, so let's copy code and bring up Excel. I already have some sample data added here. And we're going to test the function on the C column. Now, because the formula that GPT wrote us was referencing A1 and B1, I'm going to paste it in C1 so that we can drag this down. And now let's check if we get the right result. So VFR, if ceiling is greater than 3000, it is, it's 3100. And visibility is less than five miles. It's two, we get VFR. MVFR, so we have MVFR here. If ceiling is between one to 3000, it's 1200, that's true. And or visibility is three to five miles. So we have four. But here's the thing. The condition that's being asked is and or. In Excel, we either have an and condition or an or condition. And in this case, I think it makes sense to have an and condition. So both of these conditions have to be true for us to get MVFR. And that's what ChatGPT has decided as well. It's written an and condition for this. Now for these last two, I just get IFR. I'm not seeing LIFR. So what's the condition for that? Well, LIFR, if ceiling is less than 500, it is, it's 400 here, and or, so let's assume and, visibility is less than one, it is. But I'm not getting LIFR, I'm getting IFR. Why? Well, take a close look at the formula here. That last condition never gets executed. Why? Because whenever we have a value less than 500, it's also less than 1000. And whenever we have a value less than one, it's also less than three. So the formula reaches this part, the condition is met, and it leaves the formula. It never comes here. So what's the solution? Well, we just have to put this condition before the other one. So I'm just gonna cut this one, go carefully before this condition and paste the other one in. And now let's see if we get the correct answer. We get LIFR here. Now I'm not 100% sure if that's what FreePilot wanted to see, but with a little bit of tweaking, we can get this to work. This last one is a common question from our students. We wanna create a VBA code that creates a PDF report for the tab that we select here. So if productivity is selected in this cell, I want the macro to go to the tab productivity, generate a PDF file and save it in the same place that this Excel workbook is saved in. And if I switch this to game and run the macro, I want it to go to the game tab and generate a PDF and save it to the same location as this file. How do we do that? Let's see what ChatGPT thinks. We just have to make sure that we give ChatGPT proper instructions. So I've typed in here, write a VBA Excel macro that looks at the value in cell C2 and finds the worksheet with the exact name. Then create a PDF and save it to the same location as this Excel file is saved in. So let's see what we get. Okay, so here's an example of a VBA macro that does what you described. And it's gone ahead and created the code for us. And it's even adding a message box at the end to inform us that the PDF was actually saved. So it also tells us that we can run the macro by opening the Visual Basic Editor and pasting the code in there. Now, if you don't know how to do this, you can ask it for proper instructions. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the code and let's go to Excel and see what we get. Let's first bring up the Visual Basic Editor so you can use the shortcut key Alt F11, or I'm just going to right mouse click on a tab and select View Code. This is going to bring up the Visual Basic Editor. So let's insert a new module. I'm just going to go to this drop down, insert a module. Now let's just paste in the code that we got. The syntax looks great. We could either directly run it from here or we can attach it to a button or a shape. I want to attach this to a shape. Notice also the moment I added my Visual Basic code, it tells me that these projects must be saved in macro enabled workbooks to resume autosave, save to a macro enabled file type. So we have to save this file as an XLSM file. Now I want to add a shape to attach my macro to. Let's go to insert, illustrations, shapes, just going to go with the square, add this in. Let's assign the macro, create PDF, click on OK, and let's just quickly give it a name. Okay, so now let's see if it works. I have game selected, so this tab should be saved as a PDF document in the same directory as this Excel file is saved in. Let's run it, 
PDF saved as game.pdf in the same location as the Excel file. Click on OK. Is that true? Game is right here. Let's open it up and it's there. Now let's switch this to productivity, create PDF, productivity PDF in the same location and productivity PDF is right here. Isn't that amazing that we got ChatGPT to write a VBA macro for us? Okay, so to wrap up, GPT did a great job in helping us out with our Excel questions, but you have to be cautious. I've noticed that there are one or two things that can be a bit off with the answers that we get. So for example, here for our VBA code, it tells us make sure that you have the add-in for Microsoft Office installed in your machine for this to work. But what does it mean by add-in for Microsoft Office? We don't need that. So sometimes you get these fishy stuff in the middle of the answers. And sometimes you can get completely wrong answers. For example, here, this is another comment from YouTube. Someone asked, I have a question about the spill error. I'm taking error when I'm using index or unique or filter formulas in the table. Where do I fail? Can't we use these formulas in the table? And ChatGPT says that the spill error can occur when using certain formulas in the table if the formula is trying to return a result that is larger than the number of rows in a table. So in a way it is correct that it can occur in the table and it does, but this part is wrong. It returns the spill error if the range is bigger than a single cell, not bigger than the number of rows in the table. Okay, so you just have to use it with care. Now, am I worried whether ChatGPT is gonna replace me? Honestly, I'm super excited about these developments. I don't think AI is going away. We just have to find a way to make it work for us. I'm a teacher, so I'm happy that ChatGPT can help people getting unstuck. So if you're stuck on a formula, it can help you figure out the problem, but it can't create, at least not yet, a Power BI hands-on course from scratch, right? So professions are constantly changing with technology. We just have to adjust the way that we bring value into this world. Let me know in the comments what you think about this and how you think it might affect your job. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next video.